translucency in real-time graphics programming. Some days ago, while working on some post-processing effects, I came across an old project of mine. It was about lighting, which is a topic that I love and enjoy studying. Though, lighting stuff is really complicated, and in order to explain this translucence effect in an easy and comprehensible way, I might do a short introduction of some of the illumination models and techniques that computer graphics application exploits. BSDF model The BSDF model, or bidirectional scattering distribution function model, I should say, is one of the most classical models adopted inside the computer graphics world to simulate the behaviors of the light rays inside a virtual scene. But before explaining that, we need to understand a bit of the basics. As some of you might know, in order to obtain a good realism inside a scene, we should simulate the lighting with a technique called ray tracing, where the word says it all. We cast a set of rays starting from the light source, we let these rays bounce on the surfaces of the scene by setting a threshold for the number of bounces, and weight them to end in order to visualize the colors of the pixels that are given in output when those rays have reached the maximum bounce threshold for a certain distance traveled. Okay, now, even if you didn't fully understand what I explained, don't worry. Just take everything I said and throw it away. This is what ideally we should do. But, as you may know, very frequently, CG doesn't really follow all the physical behaviors that rule the world. In fact, in ray tracing, we invert the reality and we basically cast a ray from each pixel of the screen, also called viewport, or if you want to visualize it in a more abstract way, we cast a ray from each pixel of the virtual camera to the scene and we let this ray bounce off the surfaces up until we reach the maximum bounce threshold or the maximum distance threshold. Just to be clear, we do that because we are only interested in the rays that hit the camera, not every single ray casted from a light source, because many of these rays will not even bounce back to our virtual eye, aka our virtual camera. And when a ray does not bounce back to the camera, like in reality, we are not able to see this particular ray of light, because it does not cross the trajectory of our eye. In this way, we faked the reality. But what we got is now optimized and really close to the behavior of light in the real world. Again, ray tracing is beautiful, but in real-time graphics we cannot use this technique due to the fact that for each frame we should cast billions of rays, make these rays bounce off the surfaces and wait for the result. As you may understand, this is too computational heavy for an algorithm that should run in a sixtieth of a second. Instead. It's perfect for an animation movie where the renders may take months. The explanation was long but not too accurate, so don't worry if you did not understand it. I just wanted to give you a preview of ray tracing, which I will cover in a future video where we realize a stunning project. But anyway, back to our lighting model. So, if we cannot use ray tracing due to its complexity, we might approximate the reality with a mathematical model. At this point, you should not be too surprised that again we will use a mathematical trick in order to fake the reality. So BSDF is a model that allows us to describe how the illumination of an object happens in theory. This model is a black box, which basically means that the implementation and the math behind it are not universally defined. It can also be ray tracing or another technique that obtain a similar result, even if not optimal. The inputs of the model are all the light sources and all the objects of the scene, and the output is the lighted scene. What the model says is really easy. When a light ray hits an object, a part of the light gets reflected along with the object normal in that vertex, also called BRDF model and a part of the light gets transmitted along with the object plane and reflected along this transmission direction, also called BTDF model. Just to be really physically clear, when we transmit the light, a part of it gets absorbed by the material. 
and this is the light that lights up the material. Again, I can't cover all the lighting stuff in a single video, so I'll explain in a future one how this process takes place under the hood. You just need to know that all of this gets faked again by an amazing empirical technique called Fong Illumination Model. Even though nowadays all the major engines adopt a more advanced tool to light up the scene, this is called a physically based shading, or better, the standard material of Unity. Okay, but this model does not take into consideration that in the real world we also have translucent objects, such as our skin or the jade, aka the green material usually used to represent Buddha, which has another important property. The BSSRDF model. This is quite complex to say and to implement either mathematically or by coding it. Though it's fairly easy to understand if you understood the BSDF model. So this BSSRDF takes the BRDF model and it just adds a property of the light which is the bouncing of the light that might happen inside a material. Again, I won't go into many physical details, but just be aware of the fact that in the real world, the light does not get reflected instantly. Actually, it gets absorbed inside the material where all the light bounces for some time and only after a while, the ray leaves the object in a different position or what I entered. Well, this function in combination with a light transmission function called BSSTDF gives us a new model that perfectly describes what happens in reality. The BSSDF model. Don't worry if you confuse all these models. It's not important to remember all these names, just be aware of their existence. This model can either be implemented with ray tracing or faked through a technique that allows us to use this property even in real-time graphics. Fast subsurface scattering technique. To explain this effect, we need to introduce the concept of transparency. Transparent materials only affect the amount of light they let through by attenuating the quantity of light transmitted to the object behind of a certain value that depends on the alpha channel of this particular transparent material. That being said, transparency is a special case of a more general property called translucency. Translucent materials basically diffuse the light that enters the material and this will result in a sort of jade effect. We already described how subsurf scattering work, but now we want to find a way to implement it in a fast and efficient way, either mathematically and by coding it. The main idea is simple. In opaque materials, the light contribution comes directly from the light source. The normal or the vertices that are inclined more than 90 degrees in respect to the direction of light L receive no light. However, with translucent materials, we have an additional light contribution that is related to minus L. Geometrically, minus L can be seen as if some of the light actually passed through the material and made it to the other side. So, for the front illumination, we can simply use the standard lighting model built in Unity, the standard PBR illumination model. PBR stands for Physical Based Rendering. The only thing that we need to understand now is how to compute the back face illumination minus L. As you may already understand, we need this process in order to compute the color value of a back face pixel obtained as the sum of the standard illumination coming into the front face pixel with the back face illumination. This intuitively gives us the impression that light coming from the original source has traveled inside the material. First of all, we exploit the dot product in order to understand how the viewer is positioned with respect to the back face position. By the way, the back face position means the back face pixel position. We are talking about pixels here. If the viewer is completely aligned with the back face ray, then it might see the total amount of illumination minus L. 
but what happens if the view ray hits a back face ray at 90 degrees? Well, you might give it a go in the real world. But basically, a viewer that watches a point of translucent materials at 90 degrees angle can't see any lighting passing through it. So, we use the dot product in order to compute the angle between the viewer and the back face light ray minus cell. And from that, we get a sort of ratio that tells us how much of the light at that point the viewer might see with that tilt. We're missing only a single part more, in order to simulate this phenomenon in a realistic way. That is the surface normal, that we are not actually considering right now. But why should we use the normal? Well, it's fairly easy to understand. We just need to describe the surface distortion, or in better words, how much the current materials deflect the light rays when those rays exit from the object in the back face. So, this expands the formula shown before with two simple parameters, the normal and the ratio of the back face rate distortion. To be really clear, we are computing the minus h of the image that I'm showing you right now. Be aware of the fact that the angular parenthesis means that we want this vector called halfway negative person normalized, because we only need the direction, not also the magnitude of the vector. If we would not normalize the halfway negative vector, then we would increase the translucency strength too much, resulting in an undesirable optical effect. Just to add a bit of flavor to our formula, we will expand this formula with two new parameters that will grant us a bit more control on the final effect strength. I will show these to you, but I won't go into much details because these are unnecessary. The new P power and S scale are just two parameters that change some properties of the lighting curve or, in other words, determine how the backlight spread over the back face. The results. So, these are the results. I show you the shader that I used to do that, which basically exploits all the maths explained before. To make it more clear, I will make a second video where I will explain all the details of the implementation. But for today, I think it's enough. We saw the bare minimum behind the lighting process. With that being said, I have in mind to start a new series about lighting that will follow up my post-processing filters series. Okay, for all of you that reached the end of the video, thanks a lot. You rock! I'll see you at the next one and cheers! Thank you.